how's it going? Just here to remind you to click the like button, subscribe here to the channel so you don't miss any videos and stay well inside our entire universe of Dragon Ball. Without further ado, let's go back to the point. Goku was trapped in a time chamber, a place where time passes differently than it does in the real world. He had been imprisoned there because he was considered a threat. Since in many different realities a version of Goku caused destruction and chaos in transcendental emotions. However, Goku still didn't know it. Imprisoned Goku did the only thing he could do. He trained intensely, looking for a way to escape this prison. After months of training, Goku felt that he had reached a new level of power. He focused all of his ki and let it flow, pouring out all of his energy. He felt an incredible strength building within him, as if it was capable of destroying anything that stood in its way. Suddenly, the fabric of reality began to distort and tear around him, until it finally gave way completely. Goku was surprised and happy with the enormous power he had gained in such a short time, but his happiness didn't last long. When the fabric of reality breaks down, he finds himself in a completely different space. It was as if he had been transported to another dimension in a completely strange and unfamiliar place. He looked up and saw several time chambers capsules floating in space. When he tried to fly up, he felt that there was no place without a time chamber capsule. He was confused. He had never seen anything like this before, and he had no idea how he could escape this strange place. As he flew, looking for a way out, he felt that the time capsules were everywhere. He began to wonder how this was possible, how there could be so many capsules, and how the time chambers were contained within them. He tried to fly towards one of the capsules to see what was inside, but was stopped by an incredibly strong barrier that flew him backwards. Goku was surprised. He had never encountered such a strong barrier before. Even with all his powers, Goku couldn't destroy it. Every blow he landed was reflected back at him, making him feel the impact. He knew that something important must be inside that capsule, but he couldn't get there. Determined to find out what was sleeping there, Goku focused all his energy on trying to feel it. Goku focused all his energy on trying to feel if there was something inside the time chamber capsule. To his surprise, he felt key extremely similar to his own. He was confused for a moment, wondering if the barrier could have reflected his own presence back at him. However, before he could think about it further, he caught the presence of another being with a similar key to his own, hovering nearby. Goku was excited at the possibility of meeting someone. Following the person's presence, Goku wondered if this person would be able to help him or at least answer some of his questions. As he approached the mysterious figure, Goku shouted, Hey! You! Hey! The figure was on its back on top of a huge rock that was floating on that place. Upon hearing Goku, the figure turned around and surprised Goku. The mysterious man was the spitting image of Goku himself. The figure then says, Amazing. Looks like I'm not the only monster around here. Incredible. You're just like me. You're saying too, right? Asked Goku. Mysterious figure said, And who are you? How did you get here asking a bunch of questions? Say your name first, you weirdo. And who are you? How did you get here asking a bunch of questions? Say your name first, you weirdo. But yeah, I'm a Saiyan. And apparently you are one too, right? Goku was a little confused by the way the mysterious figure spoke. But he was excited to find someone who could help him understand what he was feeling. He then introduced himself. I'm Goku from Universe 7. And you? The mysterious figure looked at Goku with an intense gaze, as if sizing him up. Goku noticed that there was something different about this figure, something he couldn't explain. Then the figure replied, Your name is Goku. <laughs> I never met someone with that name. My name is Kakarot. Goku widened his eyes in surprise. Really? That's my second name too, he said, shaking his head. Interesting, you must have a great life story. Introduced Kakarot with a smile on his face. Goku couldn't help but smile too, but his expression soon changed to a more heartfelt one as he remembered why he was there. Ah, Kakarot, I have something funny to say. I have no idea what's going on. Could you explain to me uh, what's happening? Asked Goku, sincerely confused by the situation he found himself in. Kakarot looked even more surprised. Hey, you don't know? Goku shook his head. I have no idea. Nobody told me anything. I was trapped in one of those capsules. No, I was trapped in one of those capsules. I don't know how else these capsules are like in the time chamber. Explained Goku, looking at Kakarot. Kakarot said... I see. So you'd know absolutely nothing. He said in a worried manner. In that case, the first thing you should know is that I am you and you are me from a parallel reality. 
A reality that is not separate by either time or space. It's a new dimension mirrored by another dimension mirrored by another dimension and so on. And that's how we all originated. Kakarot explained, glaring at Goku. Goku was stunned by Kakarot's explanation. It was hard to understand but he knew he had to trust them since he was the only clue he had as to what's going on. And the second thing? He asked, eager for more information. We are being haunted by several gods in different realities. At some point some Goku or Kakarot that is, whatever the name of this other version of us is, will be captured and imprisoned in a capsule with temporal rooms, said Kakarot. Said Kakarot, his expression becoming more serious. Goku was completely stunned by Kakarot's words. But at the same time, he felt a strange animation inside him. He had never imagined that there would be so many gods behind him and his other versions. How is that even possible? Why are we even being hunted? Kakarot realized Goku's confusion and explained. Hmm. Several versions of us have already caused imaginable catastrophes. We were classified as a threat at the level of the Great Senosama. The gods decided to hunt us all down because worse than a god of destruction is a god of antimatter. Someone who can erase life like it's nothing. A version of us, they call that. Goku was shocked by the revelation, but he also felt a twinge of pride. So you mean our potential for evolution surpasses the gods and that's why they're afraid of us? Asked Goku. Exactly, replied Kakarot excitedly. And even now you still don't realize what you've done, do you? Asked Kakarot. Uh, I don't understand anything, what did I do? Kakarot looked at Goku in awe and said, You have great potential, my friend. Anyone who escapes the capsule is no longer the same. I, I still don't understand. You just escaped from a capsule that imprisoned you in a temporal chamber made to punish angels and even rebellious gods. At that moment you overcome a pseudo god of destruction. Maybe even clash with an angel, explained Kakarot. Goku looked at Kakarot in surprise. He couldn't believe he had so much power inside him. But then a feeling of dread began to build in his chest. If the gods were hunting them all down, that meant he wasn't safe anywhere. Goku looked at Kakarot in surprise. He asked him how they were going to seek to evolve with the gods all the time behind them. W we won't be safe anywhere, pointed Goku. Kakarot hesitated before answering Goku, but he finally said, Yes and no, we're safe, but our other versions are still being hunted. He sighed, thinking of the challenges they still lay ahead. Our problems now are no longer the gods. After all, we've already been captured. But we only managed to get past the first problem. There are still other challenges to return to our reality. Goku looked at Kakarot worried and asked, And in the second problem, are we alone? Kakarot shook his head. No, we're not alone. There are many of us scattered around, all looking for a way to increase our power and escape from here. Kakarot looked thoughtful before adding, I heard that a version of us has been causing a lot of trouble for the gods outside. This version was the first to escape the time chamber. It became known as the Devourer of Life or God of Antimatter. He simply ended all traces of existing life by escaping from prison. Because of this, the gods decided to make a new layer of protective barrier to prevent other possible versions of us from escaping. We will have to do much more than that. We will have to do much more than just escape in the capsule. It will be something new and unprecedented. Goku was impressed by the story. <laughs> this guy must be amazing. I'd like to find him one day, he said, his expression determined. Kakarot agreed. <clears throat> he must be, but we have to focus on getting out of here first. Then we can think about challenging the life feeder. Goku nodded, agreeing with his friend. Of course, we need a plan first. But the idea of finding someone that strong is exciting. As they were talking, a mysterious figure approached. It was a version of Vegeta they had never seen before. He had a somber air and appeared to be in a state of deep meditation. Kakarot and Goku were surprised to see him, but decided to approach him to try and find out more about his history and his quest to escape that place. They approached carefully, trying not to disturb Vegeta's concentration. Hey, who are you? Asked Goku, trying to get Vegeta's attention. Vegeta opened his eyes slowly, and his expression turned into a mixture of anger and disbelief. I am the Great King Vegeta, of course. How did you not realize that before? Kakarot took a step forward, trying to defuse the situation. Uh, sorry, we didn't mean to offend you. Uh, we're just trying to escape this place and wanted to know if you had any information that could help us. 
Vegeta looked hesitant to share anything with them. <clears throat> I don't trust you. I don't know if you're our friends or enemies. Goku was in a state of confusion as he saw a version of Vegeta in front of him. He had thought that that place would only be inhabited by versions of him. But to his surprise, there was also a version of his eternal rival. Kakarot, for his part, was also surprised and stated that he had never seen any other version of Vegeta in his travels and wanderings in this world they were trapped in. In addition, Kakarot said that he never imagined that Prince Vegeta could be a king in any reality. Because in his reality, Vegeta always preached peace and was so meek and calm that he was a fiasco as a Saiyan warrior. The statement left Goku even more confused. As in his reality, Vegeta was known as a Chaos Wrangler and a powerful Saiyan warrior. Faced with the contradiction between the two realities, Goku questioned Kakarot if he was serious, stating that it was almost unimaginable for him to think of Vegeta as a pacifist. However, the version of Vegeta present in that reality got irritated with their conversation and told them not to compare him with this pathetic version they had of him. Vegeta's presence in another reality, especially as a pacifist, was something difficult for Goku to understand, who had always known Vegeta as a fierce warrior and a constant antagonist in his battles. Kakarot's statement about Vegeta's personality in his reality seemed almost absurd to Goku, who was used to fighting the Saiyan Prince in his own reality. The conversation with the version of Vegeta present in that reality left Goku and Kakarot thoughtful for a few seconds and curious about the different versions of themselves and their friends that could exist in other realities. They began to question themselves about how the choices and decisions they have made in their own realities could have led to different outcomes in other realities. The experience of meeting a different version of a familiar character was a new experience for both Goku and Kakarot. They realized that the multiverse was vaster and more complex than they had previously imagined, and that there were countless possibilities and realities that they had not yet explored. The conversation with the version of Vegeta present there had made them more humble and curious about all the realities that they still didn't know, and it opened their minds to a new understanding that would make all the difference in their near future. During Goku, Kakarot and Vegeta's conversation, dark and lifeless beings approached them, ready for direct combat. They physically resembled Goku, wearing black masks and black clothes. They looked empty, without any life. The three warriors realized that there was something strange about these beings and prepared for battle. However, they were weak, and Goku made no effort to finish them off. The battle was not difficult and was over in a few moments. Upon starting combat, Goku showed a small portion of his power, just to warm up and prepare for more difficult battles. This served to impress everyone there, including Vegeta, who was amazed at Goku's power. Kakarot, upon seeing the power emanating from Goku, thought to himself, That's a third of his power? Impressive. And I'll challenge him. Meanwhile, Vegeta felt inferior. He considered himself incredibly powerful. But he realized that in just that one small battle, the version he knew of Kakarot wasn't even close to a third of Goku's power. Vegeta's facial expressions changed to a mixture of surprise and admiration. There was respect and maturity that we didn't know expressed in his gaze. Kakarot was visibly perplexed by the appearance of the dark and lifeless beings that attacked them. With a confused expression, he asked Goku where these beings were and if he had seen anything similar before. Goku shook his head, saying that he had never seen anything like this. Vegeta, who seemed less surprised by the situation, explained that these beings were common in that place, and that they always appeared suddenly. They are not strong and do not have battle intelligence. It is as if they were lifeless dolls following orders, but their origin was still unknown. Meanwhile, the beings' bodies began to dissipate, turning into dust. Unfortunately, this prevented any kind of more detailed investigation into the origin of these mysterious beings. Goku sighed and commented that there seemed to be more questions than answer in that place. He looked around, taking in the desolate landscape and dark, unsettling space. It was like they were in a completely different world that they were used to. Kakarot, for his part, seemed excited at the prospect of new challenges and adventures. He turned to Goku and said with a smile on his face, Well, at least we're not going to get bored here, are we? However, Vegeta remained silent and seemed to be mulling something over in silence. His expression was serious and concentrated, as if he was analyzing every detail of his surroundings. And this is where we're gonna end today. So, my partner, what do you believe? Will Goku overcome this situation? What is the truth behind these beings? 
What can happen in the midst of all this? Regardless of what it is, it is more than important that you already expose it here in your comments so that we can enter into that crazy debate. Don't forget to click the like button, subscribe here to the channel, and hit the bell so you don't miss any videos. And that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.